up, peeps? It's Great White making it happen again today with some more Portal Knights. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm having an okay day. I've fallen ill with a sickness, but I will prevail. We will make it through this video, and I'll teach you everything there is to know about all the new stuff that came to Portal Knights Creative Mode in this new update. Woohoo! Let's do it. So, we have lots of things going on. We got waypoints. We got these crazy things here. These blowy uppy things. Look at them go. Boom! 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 Confetti everywhere! Fantastic. But, we're not gonna quite get into that yet. There's actually some stuff I wanna look at before we get into those. And it's all over here. So, we have some new items for creative mode that aren't necessarily logic block items. Let's take a look at them. So, you guys knew about the parquet block. Well, we have a new dark parquet block. This is actually part of the, the actual game itself. But, and there it is right there. Some sweet, sweet parquet action. Everybody loves it. Everybody loves the parquet block. It's probably the best block in the whole entire world, but there is the parquet block. I like it. I like it a lot. I didn't mean to place that there. I was trying to use my drill, but whatever. 4x4 four four is what I was going for. Perfect. And in addition to that, we have a new stone block. Large Feanor stone block. It's very similar to the large white, large white stone block, brick block that we have. Woo, words. Where it has the, uh, the squares on the bottom and then the more brick elongated bricks on the side definitely a good looking block adds another color that we can screw around with when we're building so that's always good news i very much like it i like the different textures in the blocks that we get in portal knights so it's a con continuation of what we expected really it fits perfectly i think that was a great addition um that's actually a similar color it's all that feanor color right so that weird blue aqua i don't know how to describe it it's very nice though i like it a lot um, same color as the druid station, which we do have in creative mode now, so that's exciting. We do have the druid banner, and we do also have the furfolk banner now, as well. There's that one right there. This, weird, this is Shrek. Shrek with a waypoint above his head. Shrek with a waypoint. That's what I call that. Now, there are some other things that got added in, some exciting new things. We're gonna need a volunteer for this next bit. Do I have a volunteer? Sure, Zareph, you can join us. Alright, so, pretty cool things going on here. Look at this hat. Isn't it the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life? Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so crazy. It's so crazy, it's me! Alright, so we've got wild things going on here. Check it out. We've got some new signs. So you guys are familiar, probably, with the wanted sign. It was just a decorative item that we had for a while there. So we have a wanted poster. Well, now there's one, two, three, four wanted posters. Now, the original one, if we place it down, just a regular old wanted poster. Nothing special about it. These other ones look the exact same, but with one exception. We can now read and write on these. So, wanted Cannibal Lewis. Cannibal Lewis is wanted for baking roasts inside vegetarian-only ovens. Oh, no. But what's great is you can come in here and you can actually delete all of this. And you can type out your own thing. Cannibal, ooh, with the caps on, Cannibal Lewis, he loves to eat peeps. That's it, perfect, so now we've got that. So if you guys are building adventure worlds, like Mount White, like something similar to that, you can actually add some fun things for people to do in the game with wanted posters. We've got three different variations of it. I'm not sure why they did it this way. It seems a little bit strange, but very useful nonetheless. Blind Beauregard is one for allowing a panda wearing a dress into a nursery. Oh, no. Nice smelling Nell brick is wanted for stealing 400 gallons of flower water. Oh, my. Oh, my. He smells so good, but he's such a bad boy. Now, this is pretty neat, right? This, uh, this has a lot of potential in creative mode for adventure worlds that you're building. But even better than that, I would say. Well, let's get this off. Even better than that is NPCs now. Check this out. Zareph, we have something we can have him say. So if people, if I put Zareph in my world, I want him to say something, I can have him say, Hey there, adventurer. I like your hat so much. Look at that. Hey, he says it. If we go to adventure mode, he would say that, obviously. But, um, yeah, those are pretty cool additions. I'm a big fan of those. So, in addition to all of that, there is a new door that we got as well. So, if we jump over to the logic items, we go to doors. We have this starting gate. So, starting gate is pretty cool. We can flip this around. And let's get it, let's get it, uh, underneath there. Cool. So, if we uh, flip this around, pretty cool. It's just a, it's just a gate, obviously. We can open it up. Just opens like that. There are spikes sticking out of the ground at the bottom. A little bit scary. Just a little bit scary. But you know what? It's a cool gate, so I'm not going to complain. I like it a lot. 
Honestly, it's super cool. Now it does. Um, if we go ahead and let's let's break it really quick. Oh, oops. Oh, oops. Oh, oops. Okay. It does it have to be closed? Okay. Apparently, it has to be closed in order to break it. All right. Now you know. I had no idea. We just learned together. Adventure. Yay. Okay. Let's get this back. Um, if we take this up, say like this, we get one, two, three. Let's go. Oh no. Where am I? One, two, three. Hopefully that's right. We place it down there. And then let's go ahead and break this all out from under and above. Check it out when we open it up. Just so you guys know how this works. It does stick down through the ground a little bit when you open it and up through the ceiling. Now this is something you could actually use to your advantage potentially. Um, you could actually use this in a decorative way, I think. You could probably do some cool things with this stuff sticking out the bottom, sticking out the top. So something to keep in mind if you guys are doing some creation stuff. I don't know. I feel like there's some potential there to do something cool. But um, I definitely like it. I like this addition. It's very cool. So let's go ahead and get that out of here. Outside of that, I don't believe there are any other new items or anything like that. Obviously, all the druid stations, of course, but... I think that's really it. I don't think there's anything else exciting going on. Oh, yeah, there is a new minecart with the uh, Feanor blocks in it instead of the regular gold. So that's a pretty cool addition. I like that a lot. Um, outside of that, I think we're, we're pretty much... That's pretty much it. I mean, there's really not too much more going on as far as decorative stuff. No new NPCs. Andrew. <laughs> Why don't they add him? There's uh, no new enemies as far as I'm aware. I didn't see any when I went through them earlier. Yeah, looking pretty straightforward. No new tools or anything like that. Um, the one thing we do have, though, is some new logic items. So the new logic, logic items we got you guys saw earlier in the video, right away at the beginning. They're pretty cool. I like them a lot. So we have, well, let's go ahead and jump back over there and take a look at them. So the first thing you saw is the waypoint. We have this waypoint chilling out in the middle here. Now, this waypoint is very interesting. Excuse me, this is a checkpoint. This is a checkpoint we're looking at right now. The waypoint is something different. So the checkpoint, if we run through it, boom, sends a signal. Now, it's a little bit weird. I had to I had to make this little contraption to get it to work over and over again. Normally, you wouldn't be able to run through it multiple times. Normally, it doesn't work like this. Normally, what you'd have to do is you would have to... Okay, so let's kind of talk about it. How does it work without any additional logic items or anything like that attached? Normally how it works, we can actually grab a new one really quick and I can show you exactly how it works. Let's get rid of our dirt block. Let's grab a torch really quick. I use torches for um, for logic blocks because it's easy to tell if something's sending a signal or not. We're just going to take a signal from here, get connection, and come over here place it into the torch. And if you guys don't know already, the connection tool, which is at the top of the logic items menu, this is what we're using to do all this. So while we have it out, we simply look at it, click on it, grab connection, send it into that. So now we know there is not a signal being sent into the torch. So just having a waypoint, let's see if we walk through it, does it send a signal? No, it doesn't. It does not send a signal. So what we learn is that there's two different inputs for the uh, the checkpoint. There's an input one and an input two. And because Portal Knights loves us, they decided not to give us a tooltip. So we're going to have to figure it out for ourselves. Well, luckily for you, I've already figured it out. So what we'll, ha what we'll have to do is in order for this to work, there needs to be a constant signal going into it. So if I take this, this is a uh, toggle. Uh, switch, uh, lever, whew, words, this is a lever, if we go ahead and put that into slot number one, grab the connection for this, put it into slot number one, turn it on, turn it off, we send a signal into it, is it going to work? No, it's not going to work, so what we're learning now is that there needs to be a constant signal going into the checkpoint for it to work, so now if I walk through this, it does turn on, now here's where things get a little bit interesting and a little bit weird, so now I walked through this, it does turn on, if I come over here and I turn off this this toggle, what do you think is going to happen? Turn off? No, it actually doesn't turn off. It continues to send a signal constantly once we've walked through it, which is, you could argue, a good thing. I would argue kind of annoying. So what we need to do now is that this input number two is the reset input. So now if I grab a second switch really quick here, pop this down, put this into input number two, we can flip that and it turns off, right? Now, if I leave this off, 
there's not really a reason to leave it off. If we, well, let's actually let's see. So let's see if I have a, if I have a constant signal going into input number two. I don't know the answer to this. So we're gonna we're gonna discover this together. Constant uh, input going into si uh, signal going to input number two, and a constant signal going into input number one. What happens if we walk through this? Nothing. It's just like the timers. Okay, great. So it is just like the timers in that if there is a signal setting it, if there's a signal going into it that's resetting it or in this case, input number two, if there's a constant signal in input number two that resets it, it doesn't matter if you have a signal starting it, it's just gonna stay off. So we have to send a signal into it to reset it and then have another signal going into it to turn it back on. Although now I'm thinking, what happens if we just leave that on? So if I go in like that, it does turn on and then I can come over here Reset it, it still works. Ah, that's interesting, that's interesting. That's very interesting indeed. So we can actually simplify this little thing I have going on over here. So let me explain what I did with this. So the reason I'm making this change is because these checkpoints, are ideally, ideally I, I believe what Portal Knights wanted us to use them for is to make races. So you're racing along and you build your track and you can add these waypoints to run through. And you can uh, set things up to them like uh, this confetti is like a, just a, just a fun thing. Now there is a larger waypoint. There is a bigger one, so don't worry if you're like, oh, that's such a tiny waypoint. Oh, there's a, a big giant one, so no worries at all. You could probably jump over that on a mount though, so you have to be careful. <laughs> now um, the so the uh, the way I had this set up before, I ju we just learned something new is that if we have the signal turning it on, just stay on constantly. Yeah, our lives are actually a little bit easier. So what I did over here originally is I set this timer. I had this timer that I wanted the timer to basically control when the uh, the checkpoint is on or off. So I said, get a connection from this timer, go ahead and set it to turn on the checkpoint. Now, I had this timer set to one second. I just did the, sh the shortest one I could. That's the lowest one they have is one second timers. And then what I did is I set it up so when the when the player walks through this checkpoint, it turns on the signal. And then we take the signal from this and we send it back into turning off the timer. So the timer's on, we walk through, it sends a signal, it turns off the timer. And then what happens is we also send a signal to a delay right here. And this delay is 0.1 seconds. So as soon as this gets triggered, it turns off the timer that's sending a signal into it. But then it also sends a signal into this delay, which is gonna take that signal we sent from the, the checkpoint. And 0.1 seconds later, it's gonna forward that signal again into the timer. I used an OR gate because I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But so basically what's happening is we walk through, a signal gets sent to restart the timer and it goes to the delay at the same time. And then because of the delay, 0.1 seconds later, we go back into the timer to turn it back on again. So the, the timer is only being turned off for just a very short amount of time, just like 0.1 seconds. Now, to be fair, there is a one second countdown before the timer turns on. So it's technically 1.1 seconds, but there's a workaround for that too. Check this out. If we decided that we wanted to use this same signal from the waypoint or the checkpoint rather to go ahead and trigger these uh, firework things, these confetti cannons, watch what happens. This is very weird. Very weird. The sound gets cut off because that signal is so short because we uh, we're sending the signal and it gets turned off right away. So for some reason with these confetti cannons, the sound cuts out as soon as we uh, turn it off. So what I did to work around that is I just used a, a not gate on the timer because the timer has 1.1 seconds where it's counting down again before it will turn back on. So there's 1.1 seconds where this not gate will be turned on if we if we take the signal from the timer and put it into the not gate. So for 1.1 seconds, that that uh, not gate will be sending a signal. And so now if we walk through that, watch the watch the not gate over there. 
I was standing in it. That was my bad. So for 1.1 seconds, that NAT gate is on and sending a signal, which is enough time for that sound file to actually play the full sound. So we don't get that gross sound of like getting cut off. So it's a, it's, it's an interesting workaround, but I think we can make this a little bit, a little bit better now because we just need a constant signal in, into the, um, into the waypoint, the checkpoint rather. We don't need to re to uh, do, screw around with the uh, the signal going into it. So tell you what, let's try something new. Um, I'm going to destroy all of this. Let's go ahead and destroy all of it. Oh, oops, that's not what I wanted. Okay, perfect. And then this is just going over there. That's fine. Now, what I want to do is I want to take the connection from this, and I want to turn it on. So this is constantly on. Now what I want to do is I want to say when this gets triggered, I just want to send a signal into here to turn it off. So basically, as soon as we walk into this, it's going to turn on. It's going to send a signal here, which will delay and send it back into turning off the waypoint. Let's see what happens. Interesting. Okay. That's good to know. That's good to know. Okay, cool. So now what we could do is we could go ahead and put this in here. Okay, cool. So that works pretty well too. Now it's only going to work every one second. This is another instance where we could turn this down, but you were going to run into an issue. That's the issue. So it actually works faster this way. This way, what we just did right now versus that one I showed you a moment ago, this works better technically in the sense that it works faster, but it is going to give us that annoying gross sound. So I think I prefer the, the other way. Yeah, I think so. I can't think of a way we could make it so that those play. I'm sure there's a way. I'm sure there are very smart people in the audience that know how this works and can make that work, but I simply don't know. I, I don't know the answer. But waypoints, uh, checkpoints, excuse me, I keep mixing them up. Checkpoints are definitely very cool. The checkpoints are nice. They're going to be fun to play around with. Enemies do not trigger checkpoints. Enemies do not trigger checkpoints. So you cannot have this go off because an enemy walked through it. Same with like the uh, the floor traps, the... um. The pressure plates, you guys know what I'm talking about. Pressure plates, enemies don't trigger pressure plates. They don't trigger checkpoints. I wish they would. I wish they did, but they do not. Um, or I wish there was like an option to turn it on or off, maybe. Something like that. Now, the waypoint is the other new thing. Now, waypoint took me so long to figure out. Waypoint was a real pain in my keister, I tell you guys. Waypoint drove me nuts, but I got it figured out. So, we have it in our hand now. If we place it down, there it is. Big old waypoint. If we hover over it, doesn't matter what we're using. If we hover over it, we see this this big sphere. So the sphere was so confusing. Let's look at the waypoint. We have two connections. All right. So these are a little bit weird, and we're gonna have to jump into adventure mode to show you how this works. But essentially, what's going on is we have these two these two inputs do the same thing sort of so what we do is this sphere indicates the area of which enemies placed are affected by the waypoint so if we have an enemy in here they are going to be affected by the waypoint and the way it works is you need a second waypoint that's how this is going to go down so if we place a second waypoint here i can grab my connection tool grab this get connection place it over here and then if we take any enemy, let's grab, uh, you know what, let's place them further away because I know when the game's loading, they'll start walking a little bit and I want you guys to see the whole thing. So let's place it over here. So we'll grab a connection from this and we're gonna place it into this one. Now let's just grab any random enemy. Oh, we probably should have kept that in our hot bar. Let's grab that again. Any random enemy, sorry inviter, sure. Let's place him down right here. And now let's go ahead and load up the world in test mode. That's going to be test play island. All right, here we are in test play island. And you can see we didn't have to put a signal into this waypoint over here. And sure enough, he is going. He's going for it. He's really making it happen. Great job. Great job, sorry, fighter. So he runs right away. So with that first input for waypoints, we can see that they will be triggered. Now, 
stress funny they'll be triggered oh, i'm so triggered right now <laughs> but the uh second input is a little bit different so let's jump back over really quick all right we're back in creative mode so we see that when we place a, a signal in here it'll just go otherwise we place a signal in here um we don't need to put anything in, in those so right so the, it will it will it will trigger a movement without any kind of signal going into it and when you put a signal into number one it's just saying they're going here like the waypoint wherever it leads to that's where they're gonna go and actually that's interesting i don't know if they would go towards some other lo logic item i don't know why you'd want them to but i mean maybe maybe it would i'm not sure but the um if we take a look let's see does that send a signal it doesn't okay it does not send a signal um the uh, other thing we can do so if you wanted to we could go ahead and go like this and we've created a little loop for this guy and he'll just kind of patrol back and forth so if you're making another you know adventure type build and you create like a fort for your enemies to be in you could have them patrolling the outside for example you could create like little enemy patrols that'd be pretty cool actually i'd like to see that that'd be super fun um, but the other thing we need to learn really quick here is the input number two. So input number two is actually very similar. So if we, if we remove these and we get connection here and we put it into input number two, this guy should not start moving until we add some kind of signal to that waypoint. So if I put that in there, I believe, I believe this is how this works. Let me check really quick. Let's jump over to adventure mode again and, and uh, see what happens. All right, here we are in adventure mode again. I'm taking a look. He is not moving. So we actually, this is weird. This is weird to think about, guys, because on this waypoint over here, we didn't change anything. We didn't change anything at all. The only thing we changed is on that waypoint over there, we put it into input number two versus putting it into input number one. So if we use input number one for the, the waypoint it's going toward, it does not require any signal to, to trigger the movement. However, if we put it into input number two for the next waypoint, then the waypoint it's coming from needs to receive some kind of a signal. By flipping this lever, we're turning that signal on on this one. That's how, I, that's how I hooked it up. And that triggers him to move. Now, let's see. What happens if I turn it off in the middle of his move? Nothing. It, nothing happens at all. He still keeps moving. Okay, so that's interesting to know. But guys, this has a lot of potential. This could actually make creative builds very, very interesting. You could you could create a raid world. I think that would be a pretty fun thing to do to create like a big like dungeon or like a big castle or keep or something and create like a quote unquote raid world where you have patrols of enemies running around outside. You have them like posted all over the place and it's just like a big, well, a big raid that sounds like a super fun thing to do i think it would be a blast it could only be cooler if they gave us the ability to the ability to have i think this is what i would really love to see in portal lines is like some kind of currency in creative mode so that we can make our own versions of their tower defenses their relic defense that they created that seems like a really fun thing to do but um i guess we'll have to see if they do that in the future hopefully hopefully fingers crossed but that's all the new logic items guys i hope you did like it i hope you liked this video i hope it was fun for you here's my black panther riding around on him pretty exciting stuff the new update's great i hope you guys get it i hope you guys have fun with it make sure you like this video if you liked it if it was helpful for you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i would appreciate that leave a comment if you have any advice anything you noticed that i didn't notice or you've learned about the new logic items anything at all i love to talk to you guys in the comments but uh yeah you've been a pleasure as always and i hope you do have just the best kind of day see you later dudes